history of the star forts of Malta appears to be crystal clear and well known in great detail. That's until you visit there actually. So with great confidence mainstream historians will tell us the meaning of each and every small symbol on the buttons of the military uniforms of the people who built all these forts and yet not a single word about these ruins? Are they too small to be noticed? Not even a single mention that the star forts of Malta are built on the top of older ruins which show signs of heavy erosion. The medieval wall made of blocks on the top clearly stands on something older. The older stuff, the older project seems to have been significantly altered. For example, here they patched an entire room or window or a door in the old rock cut structure. Here they patched another door or window. And the stairs, they're not to be seen anymore. Apparently, they didn't need them at all while they were remodeling the full thing. And these are not at all isolated examples, you will see countless more throughout this video of uh, patched stuff, remodeled, the old thing put into new shape. For example, here they patched another room or whatever gate. And to make it easier to understand the images that you see, please note that there has been recent renovation work as well, modern, on these fortifications. For example, this is modern work. And this is the original medieval stuff. The newish polished stone here is modern repair. The older blocks are original medieval. But then, what is this? It looks visibly older even than the medieval stuff. Not to mention that it is obviously a monolithic work. And therefore, if the smaller medieval blocks were of the same age, they would have disappeared almost completely by now, because each individual stone brick has so many sides to be exposed to the erosion. Let's first of all have a look at what the official history has to offer to us. What do they expect us to believe? Well, Malta is home to a good number of star-shaped fortification and each of them will have its detailed history. And a typical history would look something like this. 
uh, they decided to build a fort, so they invited Dutch and Italian architects. There were competitions, couple of years, they were wondering what type of shape to choose for their fort. And at the end, uh, one particular architect won the competition, and so they started working and on and on and on for miles, even minor details, and you wonder how can this not be true if they know such small details even. And yes, they will tell you there was something here before that, but uh, the most impressive part of the full settlement was an obelisk. And yeah, you can imagine what kind of uh, high-tech settlement it must have been if uh, a single obelisk was... Uh, the suggested most important uh, structure of it. In other words, the mainstream history implies that there was nothing remarkable and definitely no huge fortification, what to speak of a star-shaped fortification, before the project of the whatever Dutch or um, Italian architects. If that's true, then the only possibility is that all this rock cutting work must have been done in medieval times. Now that's a whole lot of work because star forts are a very complex stone lace, a giant lace. This is like carving an entire town out of rock. I specifically went and checked also the smaller rays, the smaller pointers of the star forts. Are they with rock cut stuff as well or is it only standard pieces of stone? No, sometimes the rock cut basis was smaller, sometimes higher, but it was always there. All the major walls, all the rays, all the big stuff was with bigger, older rock cut base. And although we are led to believe that all this happened in medieval times, actually there are a good number of really major problems with this situation. First of all, if the rock cutting was done in medieval times, then what about the complete remodeling all these rooms, staircases, and really lots of stuff everywhere that has been turned into something else. When did this happen? Not only the construction of the forts, but also the subsequent uh, repairs are meticulously recorded. There are no major changes in the history of these forts. There is no remodeling. Yes, a couple of bastions were changed, but this is well recorded and it's nothing major. So the first problem is that we see a remodeling on grand scale and that is absent from the history. The second major problem is pretty obvious. The rock cut stuff is, looks very, very old. It is visibly and strikingly older than the medieval blocks. This is a major problem. And the next problem is not less serious. People were not doing a rock cutting as a construction method in medieval times, at least on such scale. People were fashioning dwellings and necropolises, temples, whatever you wish you can call them, a couple of thousand years ago, not a couple of hundred. Yes, medieval fortresses are normally built on cliffs that are difficult to access, the fortresses, they embrace the cliffs, they are built from stone blocks on the cliffs, they follow the shape of the cliffs on the top, but a rock cutting as such is uh, used very, very little in medieval times. The next major problem is that the rock cut older base 
was not really designed with a defensive uh, thought behind it, defensive idea, at least in the way it is understood in medieval terms. I underline that. I'm not saying the older stuff didn't have any defensive purpose. I'm saying that it doesn't really follow the medieval idea of how this should be done. For example, you can often see staircases on the outside of the very defensive wall of the star fort. This would greatly facilitate the penetration of any potential enemy inside the fortress. Welcome inside, my dear enemy. After welcoming the enemy with outside stairs conveniently located at at least dozens of locations all around each fort, they are further welcomed to, uh, to the city with inside stairs. And again, this is on the inside of the main defensive thick wall, the outside wall of the star fort. This is also part of the outside defensive wall. Now it is uh, made to facilitate uh, shooting just a small hole, but before it had a welcoming staircase. I hope it's becoming pretty obvious after all this imagery that the medieval stuff was built on something that was already in ruins. For example here, this is the modern reconstruction, the smooth new stone, and this is the original medieval work. Please kindly pay attention how the medieval work embraces something, a surface that is already eroded. This wall on the left has been straight once upon a time, but it has been curved by severe erosion or by some sort of mighty weapon. Every time that I say erosion, please take it to mean erosion or weapon. And if the rock cutting was done in medieval times, why would they even remove all this rock that was on the place of the wall on the right side to then build another wall and if this was to be observed at only one or couple uh, of spots then we would say oh it was some mistake the workers or they decided to change it afterwards but it is just at every step and I visited the most of these star forts on Malta and certainly all the major ones and they all had a an older base is shaped like a star for sure. This is a hewn surface, part of an arch, and that's why it is preserved. It is also labeled as such. There has been a huge arch here once upon a time. This is utterly disconnected with the present uh, uh, architecture and layout of this star fort. And they are telling me that before it, the most impressive thing that was here was a single obelisk sticking out from the beach and some sort of primitive huts around.
There is yet another, also very serious problem with this hypothetic scenario of the rock cutting work being done in medieval times. And that's the amount of work and the excess material, the leftovers of the stone that has been dug out. The excess stone, the byproduct of cutting an entire town or city out of rock would be enough, sufficient, to make up a considerably big mountain for Maltese scale of size of everything. And when I say cutting entire town or city, I could be even right. I mean, even absolutely uh, right without exaggeration, because, uh, yes, definitely the mighty walls were rock cut. But you see at places like this one that have escaped the all-devouring modern construction, it is just rock cut surfaces everywhere. Just everything, even the big walls descending into the sea, they are also rock cut. All the walls of these rooms, the floor, everything here. Even something like uh, vehicle tracks or maybe some sort of cut canals head straight to the sea. Means all this was uh, quite different, the shoreline was different in those times. In fact, man-made rock cuttings can be seen in abundance everywhere at the shoreline, where modern construction has not yet destroyed it or cemented it over. For example, part of the original surface of this uh, tunnel has survived. The old chisel marks are clearly visible. It has been part of the old rocket town. And not just near the city walls. For example, this is a scene, a construction site found inside the town of Valletta, the capital. This is definitely an old hewn surface and then on the top this is probably medieval it's better preserved because it has been inside this is also the remains of some sort probably medieval arch and most likely it is like this the full town we just saw a couple of spots exposed by construction but the this, the town is so densely populated, there are no gardens, just the houses are stuck next to each other. It is so congested that uh, it wouldn't be difficult to hide an entire rock-cut uh, town below it. And that is the case, like in Turkey, in Italy, it's like this. These rock-cut ruins are just everywhere. Yes, everywhere except the history textbooks at school. So at this point, some of you could be thinking, okay, it doesn't look like the rock stuff is really a medieval work, but what about the historic documents on which the official history must be based? After all, some of the forts are not even medieval old, they're much younger. So probably there is a good documentation why there is nothing about old stuff in that documentation. I don't know if the official history of the forts is really based on old records or on distorted translation or interpretation of such records. 
But even, let's suppose that mainstream historians are able to produce records that look genuine, still would you trust something just because it is old record or would you trust your eyes and common sense? And even if the records are genuinely old, were there no forgeries in the past? Weren't those who conquer other lands always rewrite the history to suit their ends and thus make forgeries which after that turn into historic records? And let me remind you that in the survivor's documentary I provided in good detail proof of international scale forgeries involving the history exactly of star forts which are found in the region of uh, Siberia and all over Russia and other uh, Asian countries in the region by hundreds. That forgery was internationally organized and involved printing books in France and all that. So apparently the history of Star Forts is very important to those who wish to erase the true history of humanity. And this doesn't surprise me at all because it seems that they provide this missing link between the old civilization of the rock cutters, I call them the civilization of Egil, and an absolutely modern looking buildings like the star forts. If you wanted to convince the inhabitants of an entire planet that they are the descendants of brooting apes and in this way turn them into a bunch of violent animals that do nothing but fight amongst each other, what better way than to sever their connection, sever their memory of the magnificent civilization they come from? Also, giving all the credit for inventing these beautiful things, these amazing creations of sacred geometry, the star forts, Giving it all to the architects belonging to first world nations only further reinforces their authority as leaders of the world to developing countries. And it allows them to say, you see, we are the smart ones, so you'd best listen now and do as we say. If it wasn't for us, you would still live in the mud. And the developing countries do buy these lies and they give up whatever small remnants they have kept alive from the heritage of the survivors remaining from the old civilization and they sell their souls to the Western European banks, take their loans and once they fall into this trap, they are forever into debt and poverty, hunger, uh, pollution, stupidity, and plastic bags, garbage everywhere. This is what their countries turn into. So it seems it wasn't Western European architects who came up with this design for the star forts after all. Rather, they adopted it from the older civilization of Igil, the civilization of the rock cutters. The architects of old Western Europe are given credit for the star forts but they most likely built on top of this older star structure that was already there. In other words, they used it as a template. And if these older rock-cut structures guided the design of these star forts we still have till nowadays, that were so widely used in the relatively recent medieval era, we can look at these older rock layers as a kind of missing link that joins the Agil civilization with the modern world we live in today. For example, this is a very impressive city wall in Betron, Lebanon. We don't know if it once had a star shape or not, because so little of it remains. But certainly it has the rock-cutting style, the massive walls that clearly resemble the ruins of the old layers found in Malta. It doesn't much resemble a medieval European fortress at all. Another example here in Israel, 
in the area of Atlit. Again, very mighty walls, so high that they rise above the treetops. And their style, too, appears to be similar to the rock-cut ruins of Malta. So maybe these were contemporaries or predecessors. And the similarities don't stop there. These walls are not the only connection between Israel and Malta. The presence of vehicle tracks and rock-cut roads can also be found. If you'd like to learn more, there is an interactive map with all the vehicle tracks of that region on megaliths.org. In fact, just recently some tracks were added that come from near that region, Lebanon, and plenty from Israel. Actually, the whole region of Asia Minor, they are just everywhere. Here and there we could get glimpses of how some of the preserved rock-cut chambers look like. I would say exactly like the other rock-cut cities we saw in Italy, Spain and everywhere else. Heavy erosion on the outside, but inside quite well preserved with chisel marks and painted and all that. This was a very deep shaft. In Italy, they would call it an Etruscan well. At a couple of rare locations, the rock-cut stuff was preserved till the top. At a couple of spots, even the upper border was preserved as it was in the rock cut ruins. So, if there were any Italian and Dutch architects whatsoever, they didn't do much than renovate the old stuff in its original style. In in terms of the vehicle tracks that wander in the countryside of Malta and show connection to rock cut ruins, well, maybe the Star Forts being the topmost rock cut ruins, maybe they were the hubs. Or maybe not, maybe they were connected only with the older generation of uh, rock cut ruins. Or maybe they are generations within the tracks as well, that's why we see the excavator marks definitely connected with the uh, star forts. This is a historic road on the side of one of the star forts with uh, distinct excavator-like marks. Maybe the same excavator machines actually did all the work of uh, rock cutting at least the bigger spaces. And such scenes can be observed inside the star forts, but of course everything is cemented and destroyed by modern construction. Here and there in Valletta, traces of vehicle tracks stick from below the modern asphalt. Well, the earlier road with the excavator marks makes a turn and then turns into this road that also goes along the star fort. Here the marks are definitely wider. They more resemble vehicle tracks here. So it is possible that a portion of the cart ruts or vehicle tracks in Malta were indeed left in stone. 
but that would be a very small percentage at least of the surviving tracks and uh, those would be in the city not in the countryside where the vehicles were traveling on soil and then inside of the star forts probably these were streets as well probably they are still covered with uh, tracks below the modern gardens but it's much more important to grow chilies there there was also a board for the tourists on the site talking about uh, alleviating the suffering of the people of um, lithuania with this uh, renovation project of uh, building modern things like this on the top of the old stuff well, this is just so fantastic. Let's make another chili garden in Zimbabwe to alleviate the suffering of the people in Patagonia. Or they should have provided more details about what kind of suffering. Must have been some sort of a digestive problem, no? Or kidneys? Chilies are good for many things. We don't know what's suffering exactly. Something else that I found extremely interesting was the series of fortifications called the Victoria Lines. They are some 12 kilometers in length. So according to mainstream sources, all this was built strictly at the end of the 19th century. Okay, some of it was built in the 19th century, but on the top of what? according to mainstream sources, on the top of a natural fault. Let me show you the natural fault. This is the natural fault. Folks, it doesn't look like a natural fault to me. This is clearly a dressed surface with chisel marks on the side. This is definitely a very deep man-made trench deep and in a very poor condition part of it has actually fallen apart an erosion that cannot take place in such a short span of time as one century and even if you noticed there were some attempts of a repair on the left side even those are probably much older than a century Probably those themselves are a couple of centuries old. Built on the top of something, an attempt to repair something that was already a ruin at that time. And not only the other parts of this uh, man-made rock cut canal are visibly much uh, older than the late 19th century also they serve no defense purpose at all they were something else they were cut in the rock for some other purpose and what would be that other purpose this wall actually turns and right across the corner few meters away start those rock cut chambers which i showed you in the earlier video about the vehicle tracks because uh, the chambers had a track in front of them well those chambers are cut in the continuation of this wall of this uh, man-made uh, deep ditch Actually, the corner of that ditch is just here. Now, although these rock chambers are very old and worn out by the elements, as you can see here, they are not in the prime condition at all. Still, at a couple of places, there are few entrances preserved and they clearly show that these stone dwellings were built on this wall, on the continuation of this wall with the deep trenches, deep ditches, 
that they're telling us were built in the late 19th century by the British and they have a British name, Victoria Lines. Here, for example, you can see three somewhat better preserved doors that are cut into that very same wall that I'm talking about. The upper floors are completely destroyed. Not only the doors, maybe a couple of the front rooms are even missing. Even this modern bridge was built on old ruins here amongst this ruined pieces of stone there were difficult to notice vehicle tracks but they were there also there were some vehicle tracks here maybe this will be easier to spot on a photograph unfortunately lots of uh, points about these uh, vehicle tracks in malta were so fine that they wouldn't come across well on uh, photos. I mean, you could see the line, but because the three-dimensional effect is missing, you can't really understand what it is all about just by looking at this type of images. Now the deep trench and then these uh, rocket chambers are a very small part of the full Victoria lines, which are 12 kilometers long, what happens afterwards with this wall? Well, this is what happens to it. The hewn surface, the dressed stone definitely continues. This is how the wall looks like. It is a very high wall, but it is in very bad condition. This is definitely not uh, cut in the rock in the late 19th century. And then, if you find it not very good looking, I must tell you that these are some of the best preserved parts. Just on the other side, it already turns into this, barely recognizable. Here we have a rectangular chamber in a very poor condition. Here some other rectangular rooms have been closed with masonry. I'm not even sure if this stonework is... Uh, uh, made by the British, it could be even from earlier reuses of this old wall because I found notes that uh, even some knights were reusing the what they call natural fault means uh, these uh, rock cut walls with. Uh, chisel marks on them. That's what they call a natural fault. So, in other words, what is the conclusion from all this? In the countryside of Malta, as well, same as the capital, we have old rock-cut ruins, and on the top of that, they build modern stuff, put a British, very British uh, sounding name on it, and fool us that all this was um, built at the end of the 19th century. At this stage, I can't say if this uh, rock-cut stuff is older or contemporary to the star forts at uh, Valletta and around Valletta, but they are definitely connected. There is a continuation in the style. They are very similar. And the style is also similar to the other rock cut stuff in Asia Minor. So it's not just hanging out of the air. It belongs to this old civilization. I call it the civilization of Egil. The civilization of the rock cutters. And that's how people used to build their dwellings a long time ago. And it's like this along the Victoria lines. The old rock cut wall surface here and there where they are not completely destroyed by erosion. And the late 19th century stuff is clearly and absolutely undoubtedly built on much, much older ruins.
Malta is also home of famous megaliths. Unfortunately for common men, it's almost impossible to conduct any sensible research due to the restrictions of access and also all the modern stuff built on them and around them. This type of monkey quality modern stonework is mixed with the old stuff and it's often difficult to distinguish what is really genuine and old and what is not. The massive uh, modern paths for the tourists often made of uh, solid metal like this one uh, further destroy the natural environment of the ruins. And so the full atmosphere of the historic site is destroyed. But I think the worst um, are those monkey quality walls. Because they make the full thing look shaggy, which I think was not at all the case originally. Um, I think when this structure was its, uh, its prime, it was very stylish being made of such gigantic stone blocks that were probably fitting each other very precisely. The vehicle tracks don't seem to be connected with the temples in Malta. They are not found in greater concentration around the temples for sure. But whatever small evidence was there uh, for example, the temples could have been built on such tracks. We don't know because everything is refashioned recently. But I definitely saw minor tracks uh, sticking out from below the cement paths for tourists. And the rays of the sun seem to penetrate in a special way on special days like the summer solstice um, and so on and illuminate a certain altar in the temples. They have even made a model of it in the reception in at one of the temples illustrating what are uh, doing the rays of the sun on this particular day. It's but the question is, on the other side, they are telling us that these uh, alleged temples are a couple of thousand years old. So if they are really that old and if uh, the mainstream astronomy is correct, the configuration of the celestial bodies should have been different and the rays should not have been penetrating in such a special way. So as usual, they are telling us stories which don't match each other. That's why I simply don't believe anything uh, of what they are telling us about these uh, structures. It's even hard to say which is older, the megaliths or the rock-cut ruins that I've been uh, showing you. I was particularly impressed by one of the boards with tourist information. It says, half a century ago, decorated blocks were moved indoors to the National Museum for better preservation. Copies were placed on site. The original blocks in the museum are now in a better state than the modern copies. So even in as such short time as half a century, even though the site is now covered and before it was out there in the open in the rain, still the copies visibly deteriorated to a state worse than that of the original stones in the museum. This means that this site shouldn't be thousands of years old as they are telling us. And most likely it isn't after all. 
that would explain why these structures all are, are aligned to the current state of the stars because they were built not so long ago and this once again touches this topic that i've been repeating and proving again and again in the survivors documentary a lot of the stuff that uh, mainstream historians are assuring us is very ancient is not ancient at all all this ancient history is a sheer nonsense which is being preached just to confuse the genuine seekers who will truly try to inquire into the ancient history of humanity, which, by the way, is probably even much more ancient than they are telling us, but it is not the way they are telling us. They just were looking for something, anything, to fill up the history with and create the impression that we have figured it all out. Dinosaurs, that looks pretty exotic. Let's put that for millions of years. Actually, evidence is plentiful that dinosaurs existed not so long ago and in some cases they exist even now, along with plentiful evidence that they coexisted with humans. Also, with pushing things artificially back into the past, into the more faraway history, they are creating this fraudulent impression that everything develops very slowly, evolution, devolution, everything takes millions of years. Well, those who pull the strings on the top very well known that we live in a much more dynamic and fast-changing environment and they use it to modify us and turn us into monkeys right now. And that can happen and is happening to some extent and before people figure out what's going on, it will be over. Gradually, more and more Maltese megalithic structures are simply getting cut off from the public. Fences are being erected and in that small wagon that we see, the white one at the background, there is always somebody, but he will not let you in. If you want to see the structure, he will tell you that you have to go to another town and inquire and pay whatever 60 euro or more and they will give you an appointment for the future to visit. And this is part of this worldwide policy to stealthily, silently and very slowly disconnect people from their past, from the actual historic sites, so that uh, they can accept the fraudulent history preached in schools. And as usual, it is done very carefully under various excuses and very slowly, so that people don't understand what's going on. We also visited a vast complex of underground uh, catacombs in the area of Rabat, officially dating to the period of early Christianity. Ah yes, this time it really looked like uh, burial chambers for the first time, because usually if there is anything rock cut, it is immediately labeled as a catacomb. Well, it doesn't look like it, but this time it did look like that. So what did I learn over there? The museum is set in such a way the building, the building is slightly lifted and there is a glass floor. So this is the actual floor and what I found interesting is that um, some of the tombs are surrounded by pebbles, modern. I wouldn't be surprised if they put pebbles on the top of tracks just to prevent uh, people from concluding that uh, this type of ruins are much younger than the tracks. And some other interesting sights through this uh, glass floor. Look at these marks. Allegedly, this is a rock-cut tome, and uh, consequently, this should be chisel marks. Well, if they were indeed chisel marks, the chisels were penetrating something very soft, or maybe shovel was just penetrating the earth. And then the full thing will make more sense. You know, you bury your deceased uh, relatives in the ground, not in a stone where water collects and they will turn into a smelly soup very soon. So since this um, rock cut 
tomes or whatever seem to be younger than the tracks or even much younger, does this mean that uh, the earth was still soil, the surface was still soil even way longer uh, after the tracks were left in it? Something else interesting about these catacombs, the size of the bones found there. Now these two photographs are bones of adult people, and yet they are somewhat smaller compared to our size. Hard to say if they qualify as dwarves, but certainly considerably smaller than us. And were all the people this small in those days, or only these two by chance? Or could they have been the biggest ones in the collection, and that's why they were used in the display? Could the rest in the museum vault be even smaller? For all we know, there could be many such skeletons in various museum vaults. This could even be an explanation to why all these rock-cut tombs that are found all the way from Asia Minor through the Mediterranean are too small for people of our size. But we will never know until the public is allowed access to the history being locked away in these vaults. And if uh, people were smaller, how did we become big? We certainly have legends from all over the world telling us how other people came and mixed with the local population. Often they taught them higher knowledge. Often they were tall built. I also want to tell you how I met a living saint in Malta. So on Sunday we went to the main cathedral, which by the way is just a gorgeous, ornate, rich, absolutely magnificent from every respect. So people are coming here on Sundays to beg God to forgive them for their sin and to express their intention to become righteous, etc. And then after that, we went on to visit a couple more star forts. And on the way, we saw the living saint. Instead of begging to God, O Lord of Heaven, make me righteous, I don't want to be the sinner I am anymore. Isn't it much more simple and logical to start practically acting <coughs> out of kindness and love like this lady who is uh, regularly feeding the stray hungry spirits of the island. After all, God doesn't simply tend to use us as puppets and take complete control over us, make us whatever he wants, things like that. Instead, apparently, he leaves the decisions up to us. Isn't it the time to just take the direct path to ascension, which is so simple, as of today, starting acting only out of love?
Oh. I find it absolutely amazing how much of very interesting stuff we could discover in Malta within one short week. Humanity could immediately solve its pressing problems if it just knew that it doesn't face them for the first time and learn the lessons from its previous encounters. Those who don't want us to know who are we and where did we come from, they will do anything possible to distract us from the search of truth. Look at this board with tourist information from Malta. Megalith decorated with series of drilled holes in a curious pattern lays in the basis of the theory which links the given temple to the stars. Dear friends, look at this pattern. We are having dots. This is the simplest design you can imagine. There isn't anything simpler than that. And then these dots are arranged in lines or just random. Again, does it get any simpler than that? Can it? Can you imagine any other pattern that is less complex than this? And can you imagine any other pattern with less possible meanings and interpretations than this? I can't. This is just the simplest. And on this, that can have endless interpretations. Basically, you can interpret it in any way you wish. This is the basis of their scientific theories. This is where they want to point your attention at. Instead of exploring the ruins out there in the fields that they pretend that they don't know about, would you trust these people that they will tell you what is your history? Do you believe that your grandfather was an ape? My grandfather was not an ape. 